Hello everyone, welcome back to another episode. I decided that I'll try and do a more comprehensive explanation of load order. I have touched on it on the past and always try to offer me help to anyone who needs it when it comes to load order. But I think people need a more in-depth explanation of it as I understand it so the you guys when you pick a mods can you know decide for yourselves where the uh, mod should go in the load order now i'm not saying that i'm not going to help people who ask me to help them with the load order or anything like that um i started this channel to help people choose mods and i'm always happy to try and help people out wherever i can it's just when people have a big list of mods I can't always explain where each mod should go most of the time that's because I haven't used or tried out a majority of the mods in the list so I can't really with full confidence say this should go there that should go here a lot of the stuff that I've learned I've learned through trial and error usually a lot of the knowledge i have about it comes from just reading the mod descriptions and seeing where the mod author tells you to put it in the load order now to be fair that's not always the case they don't always put where it should go in the load order unless it has to go in a specific place so as i said i'm not an expert and this isn't the most comprehensive of tutorials to help with the load order but i have put a link in the description to a great uh, discussion thread that I found on Bethesda's forums and um, the guy who posted the top thread on there has a full rundown of where every type of mod should go so if you you know consider yourself not a beginner in this you might want to just go straight there and check out the post and get the breakdown of where every mod should go now, I personally thought it was a little overwhelming just because there's 20 cate uh, categories of mods that the guys broke it down to and I personally feel that it can be vastly simplified so as I said this is a basic tutorial if you have a vast array of mods I'm talking like 30 40 mods all on the run and you're having problems with your game maybe go there and check it out as that will help you categorize it but like i said i i feel i have simplified it a bit and i hope it does help you out so we're going to jump straight in so at the very top is we want patches so anything that's going to change something in the game on a purely script level like change the code of the game or change the way the game's going to function in the sense of how it's actually going to run below the surface so we put the unofficial elder scrolls special edition patch at the very top because that's essentially what that mod does is it changes a lot of things that bethesda didn't necessarily get right and so it's important that that's there because if you think of your load order as a kind of house of cards you don't want to have the foundation of what everything's going to rest on at the top of your house of cards because it's just going to collapse you need to build all your mods on a firm foundation if that makes any sense so that's what we're going to do by having the patches at the top so they're going to be loaded first so anything important that the game uses to actually function is going to be changed first so everything that comes after that should work fine right after that we're going to have quests so anything that like adds a quest in or changes quests and anything like that that'll be our next one in the load order after that we're going to have perks and i would also put like changes to anything about the character here in the terms of like spells or just anything that you would consider kind of functional to how the character's going to run after that we're going to have npc changes 
So followers, anything that changes the AI of the NPCs, that type of thing. And after that, we're gonna have character changes. So anything that changes like the, for the eyes, for example, or the hair or anything's gonna add anything new into the game that would revolve around characters. So one of the mods on there is natural eyes. So that's where we put natural eyes. Then after that, we're gonna have craft and mods. So anything that changes how blacksmithing works or enchanting works or anything like that. Then below that, we're gonna have armor. Anything that changes like armor or weapons or adds armor in or anything of that sort. And then personally, this is where I put weather mods and overhaul mods in terms of, so we would have vivid weathers here and we would put lush overhaul here. Now on the post that I've put in the description, it actually says that those type of mods should go near the top. I personally disagree with that. Like I said, I am not the most knowledgeable when it comes to this type of thing. However, this is where I've always put those type of mods and I've never really had an issue with them running. So just from my own personal experience, I'm just going to tell you guys to put those mods where I put those mods. And then finally, we're going to have graphic overhaul mods. So this is where I put anything that obviously changes the graphics of the game. So we're talking Skyland and uh, Skyrim graphic overhaul here. I would also put um, the Skyrim Mesh Improvement mod just above those graphic overhauls. Again, the post on the, that I put in the description says that it should go closer to the top because it's considered a more fundamental uh, mod to how the game runs. However, as I've said, speaking from experience, I've put my SMIM here and so I'm just going to tell you guys to do the same thing. And like I said, the load order is basically what it sounds like, the order that the game loads things in. So by putting the graphic overhauls at the very bottom, you're basically skinning the game then. So you'd want everything in place before you'd put the skin or the textures onto the game. The Skyrim graphic overhaul is one of the mods that says it does need to go at the bottom of the load order. I'd personally put it at the very bottom of the load order. I have experienced crashes when I've had it even, you know, second to last mod. And if your mod tells you to put it in a specific place that goes against what I've said here, then I would recommend that you follow the mod author's instructions and to put it in that specific place. Sometimes mod authors can be aware of other mods that people might want to run alongside their own mods so they'll specifically tell you how to do that one of them is apocalypse magic and fenderix magic evolved and if i remember correctly the fenderix mod tells you to specifically place it um i believe it's above apocalypse that's just because he's aware that anyone who's using his mod or their mod sorry i'm assuming it's a guy anyone who's using their mod to in, to add new spells into the game may want to use other mods to add new spells into the game so he's told you to put it in a specific place and you might get that with other mods i know the become a bad mod says that it needs to go near the bottom of the load order Again, we would consider this something that changes how the character functions because it adds in new abilities and animations and stuff like that to the character. However, we can't put it at the very bottom because Skyrim Graphic Overhaul needs to go at the very bottom. So I just would place that above the graphic and weather mods. And sometimes you're just going to have to rely on trial and error. If you add in, I've always said not to put multiple mods on at once. If you put on, if you're trying out a new mod, then you really do need to try that mod out by itself without having other mods added in at the same time, if that makes sense. 
I'm not saying you need to disable all your other mods and try that mod just by itself. I mean, just add one mod at a time to your existing list of mods and see how that affects the game. Because if I was to say add in five new mods and I got a frame rate slowdown or crashing when loading, it could be any one of those five mods that are causing the issue and I wouldn't know which one it was. So just for your own ease of use, if you've just added one mod and then you go into the game and you have issues, you know it's going to be that mod that's caused the issues. And it could be as simple as moving it in the load order into one of the categories that I've shown here. Or it may be that it's just not compatible with the mod you've got running, either because there's a conflicting issue between them if you get two mods that do the same thing or some, for, for some other reason so i as i said do not add in multiple mods at once and finally if you do have an issue with your mods when you're putting new mods on always load up a save and then if you do have an issue with your mod don't save again and then try and remove that mod and load up that later save because that later save is gonna have that mods um script in the game so removing that mod may corrupt that save or render it completely useless to you so if as i said when i first started the game one of the ones one of the mods I tried out was the hypothermia mod. So I put that mod on before I even started the game. And then I didn't like it. It was too complex for me. It, it took away from the game. It's a good mod. I, it was just too much for me. I removed the mod. And then I could no longer save the game. I could load my game up but I couldn't save. And I had no save to fall back on. Because all the saves in my save list had hypothermia mod loaded on it so like i said if you save and if you load up a save that was working perfectly fine with all your mods and then you install a new mod and then you find out you have problems the save that you initially loaded up on will be fine because it wasn't saved with that architecture in even though you're loading that save up with the new mod on it wasn't saved with that new mod so you can always fall back to that. But trying to remove a mod and then loading up a save that has that mod, you know, already running can cause issues. I know I'm starting to ramble here, but I really am just trying to like help you guys out as much as I can. Um if you have already done that, what I would suggest is to not delete the mod. Um, disable it and try it and try your save out and if the save doesn't work fine then you would be able to re-enable a mod and carry on with your game as long as it's not something that's you know completely changes how the game functions like hypothermia the hypothermia mod unfortunately i had to start the game over again because the, the hypothermia would take effect whenever I was like in freezing areas and that and so that was a major change to the game that I just didn't want to carry on with but if you were to add in say I don't know a new item like a new sword or something like that and then you had the unlikely event where that mod of the new sword caused issues and you couldn't remove it without corrupting your game you could always just re-enable the mod and then carry on with your game even though you don't want the sword in the game it's nowhere near as bad as something else so before i ramble on any more than i already have i'm gonna end it here so i hope this has helped you out go and check out the post in the description because that is as i said got a lot more information in than what i've given here but those are the basic groups of mods that i always try and stick to and if you guys stick to that same type of load order then hopefully everything should run fine for you so thanks for watching guys and i'll see you next time